Hi everyone and welcome back to Coded by Jade. In the last video, we created a prototype of the calculator we're going to finish today. So if you haven't watched that video, be sure to watch it before coming back to watching this video. As you can see here, here's a preview of the calculator we're going to create. So stay tuned to find out how. Okay, now that we have a visual prototype of the GUI calculator, we can get to writing functions for each button. There are five functions so far to get this basic calculator operating. First, let's work on displaying inputs to the screen window. What we want to do is initially declare a variable which will help display the inputs to the window. To do this, we initialize it as an empty string and then we also create a text object which will store this value. We'll set the text to just calculator for now. And when we run that, you can now see there's this calculator in the display box. And this will hold the values and the um, results of any calculation. Next. Let's create a function to keep a track of the current calculation. Instead of creating a function for each number of operator, it is better to extract our generalization and pass in the corresponding number or operator as a parameter within each push button function for simplicity, as well as saving lines of code. So just underneath screen capture, we're going to create its function representative passing in any value of represented the number or operator etc and we're going to take screen capture and display as global variables so we can access it within the function next all we simply want to do is append the current button that's being pressed, the value of the current button being pressed to screen capture. Do this, we do plus or equals, so like adding this obj to screen capture and then the, dis the value of the display, the value being this text value. So right now the value is calculator, but we're going to update the value to be screen capture. And for each button here is the same. We've got the command none. What you want to do is fill in these commands with the name of this. So we'll do it for the first one. Screen capture plus we're passing the value we want as a string because obviously we've declared screen capture as a string to in as a parameter into this function as you can see i filled all of the rest of the commands in um i've decided to stick to passing numbers as integers instead just for simplicity for when we come to the calculation function over so we're not converting between different um, data structures so to do so to correct this you just make sure that every object is a string in to accommodate for this change so when we press f5 now what we'll be able to do is type in any cap function as you can see none of these buttons work yet but we can create different calculations and it updates to the screen. Now let's create a backspace function to for this delete push button. To do this we're going to create a function called backspace. 
take care and again screen capture as a global scope and we're going to use a try except just to capture any error handling in case someone tries to backspace an empty calculation just pass so nothing will happen but what we want to do is we want screen capture to be equal to screen capture starting from the beginning to one character less so to do that we do the length for screen capture minus one and what this does is it checks the checks the string so from the start of the string to the last character is the new value of screen capture and again we want to update the display window to screen capture and now when we press f5 say for example we do a calculation and we've clicked the wrong button we'll be able to wait hold on and then we create we make sure we pass this backspace so equal to backspace there's no parameters needed so there's no lambda and there's no um nothing inside any brackets or anything so now when we create a function and we've clicked the wrong button we can press delete and we can change whatever we would like similarly for the clear function this one is much simpler we just take screen capture and we set it to an empty string because we've cleared the entire calculation so it reverts to initial state and we update the display to the empty screen capture string And make sure in the command over here we update. So click. So now if we type in anything and press clear, the calculation completely disappears. So. And they both work in conjunction with each other. Now for the most important part getting the calculator to output a result. To do this, let's first create a calculate function. Take in operators, operations and numbers as a local scope. Global. Now for the most important part, getting to calculator to output a result. To do this, we create a function called calculate, again taking screen capture as a global scope. And we're going to create a list called operators, which will store each operator. So plus, minus, times and I'm going to need to copy and paste this one divide these aren't actual apart from the plus and the minus these are actual usable operators these two by Python but it just represents the text representation and we'll go ahead and use the actual Python operators later on so we next create an empty list called hold which is going to hold each separate calculation so I'll show you what I mean so 4 times 5 hold would hold the items 4 multiplication and 5 as separate items in the list we can then create a variable that will track 
conditions that need to be met for the while loop that's coming up to be met. So we'll do until which holds the length of screen capture and then use I as a pointer. And then now for the trickiest part, we're going to create a while loop whose condition is to check that the current length of the calculation is not equal to one. And if the last string character of the calculation is a number, the, and the while loop will break on either condition. And this will allow the program to split up the calculation to break if the last calculator is not an operator. And to represent a complete calculation, or if the remaining length of the screen capture variable is one. So in a second, I'm going to show you how to do this. But if you want to challenge yourself, you can try and fig see if you can figure this out for yourself and come back to check the code. Or well, code should look something along the lines of this. I've also added two more lines of code. Um, this will update the display value to the calculation. As you can see, there's another function here, which we're going to get to in a second. And this basically takes the, each item, as we said, as I said before, this is a simple calculation. So you can only take um, a calculation of one operator. So for example, four times five or 128 minus two. And then screen capture will update to the, the, the result of that calculation just to hold this in its memory. So we're gonna move on to creating this get operator function. So let's create that get operator function. Do this again. We do get operator, and as we've seen here, we pass in the three values of the simple calculation: the first number, the operator, and the second number. And we can declare these more explicitly as parameters of the get operator function. And this function basically uses a simple switch case if else to check through the operators for each different operator. If the operator is a plus, minus, multiplication, or divide. So I'm going to show you the code in a minute. But again, you can challenge yourself and see if you can create this quick switch um, case situation for the operators. And we'll come back to the code to see if you were right. Okay, coming back to code, as you can see, this is the if else switch case. And I've gone through each operator. So if the operator is a plus, obviously we add the two numbers together. If it's a minus, we um, subtract the two numbers, multiplication, and divide. And I've obviously converted them back to floats. I've kept them as floats because if um, obviously we start with integers, but as screen capture can hold the result of previous calculation, there could be some decimal numbers, so it would be more ideal to use a float converter from string rather than an int conversion, which is an integer. And it it returns the answer, which will be stored under the value of the display dot value, which is stored by the screen capture. So to bring it all together, all we need to do is put the calculate function with its corresponding button, enter. And now what you'll be able to see is once we press calculations, we finally get a result. 20 is displayed to the screen. And again, these can be updated to store the value of any calculator. Thank you so much for watching my video and stay tuned for more content. This um, channel features many videos such as games development, coding, and hopefully photography in the future. And I hope to see you soon. <laughs>